Good afternoon, everyone. We are in the home stretch of theCUBE's live three-day coverage of HPE Discover here in the Venetian in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. Home stretch, Dave. It's been an amazing spring, really Rebecca. Has. I mean, it feels like it's just getting crazier and crazier. I don't know what the fall's going to be like, but I'm excited to look back on this spring and all the changes in AI and infrastructure and cloud. It's just amazing. And HPE Discover is really the final sprint for, for yeah, us right. the Cube for this yeah. spring. So the longest again, day of the year. In yeah. Indeed. So I'd like to welcome to the Cube Alan Kerr. He is the Director, Adaptive Cloud Specialist and AI for the Americas. Hey, thank thank you so much yeah. for Great coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. At, at Microsoft, I hope I said, at, at, at Microsoft. At Microsoft. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about Microsoft's partnership with HPE for the hybrid cloud. Start, start from the beginning. So, so we will start at the beginning. We're going to take one step back and say we've been HP partners for coming up four decades. Like, it is a long time. Um, so when we had initiatives like the uh, hybrid cloud, we're really responding to customer requests. They came and said, you know, we want all of that chewy goodness that is Azure in our data centers, in our co-location facilities, in our manufacturing facilities, wherever. And so the very first thing we do is we go to our great partners like HPE, get them on speed dial and say, here's what we're thinking. Because you know, our software runs on hardware. And so why not have some of the best hardware out there co-engineered with Microsoft to deliver to those customers? Microsoft is insane. I mean, as, I mean, it's just unbelievable to me how ubiquitous the company is. We do quarterly surveys with our partner, ETR. I actually have to take Microsoft sometimes out of the analysis because it skews the data so much. In other words, you know, you do the quadrants and it's up way, so far up to the right, it pushes everything else yeah. down. It's just, it's just remarkable, uh, the progress that this company has made. Starting with the transformation of cloud, uh, and now with the AI play that you guys have made, what's it like being a Microsoft person, you know, these days? What's the, What's the sentiment? What's the, what's the cultural vibe? Do you give us a feel for that? So, I, imagine waking up every day and it's just about excitement. I mean, <laughs> the, the, there's no, I mean all the new stuff you see, we're, they, we're doing it. We're actually doing what we're telling customers about every single day. And so when you're in there, it's just this positive vibe of like, okay, what's next? Like, I, I'm seeing what we're doing now. What are we going to come up with next? And then when customers see that, they get excited. And it's about delivering that to wherever that customer needs it. Well, it's funny because you know, the, the pendulum swing in this industry, right? You go from mainframe to client server, swings back to centralization and cloud, and now it's swinging back you know, to the distributed edge. You're positioned for all of it, yep. which, is, which is pretty unique in the industry. These waves oftentimes disrupt companies, it's almost like Microsoft is like, hey, here's another wave, let's ride it. You're yep. like the surfing champ. Um, so what waves are you on now in your world? So in my, in my world, which is basically the Azure hybrid world, so I talk to the customers every day about what we're doing sort of on-prem in their locations, whatever that is. The big ones that we're seeing is kind of the deliver that cloud experience anywhere, and in doing that, it's a matter of having sure that, well, making sure that we've got the same tooling, same capabilities, all that kind of stuff, and along with that, it's things like, hey, you've got these services in Azure, like Azure Virtual Desktop, and, and we want to do that here, we want to do that on-prem. So it's a matter of delivering those kind of things. So every day, the thing I like about it, it's solving use cases for customers. They come to you with a legitimate problem. I want to improve my manufacturing. I want to you know, uh, be more secure, whatever it is. And we're able to, within our own tool set, solve those problems. How identical is the experience that you just described? Is it like, I don't even know, or are there still, kind of nuances, obviously security is maybe a little bit different, but can you help the audience understand that delta? Well, so this is the great thing about it. It is literally the same tool set. You go to the portal, it's all there, right? The same stuff I manage in Azure, it's the same stuff I manage on-prem. I just, when I'm deploying a workload, whatever that may be, I just decide where to put it. Do I want to put it in the cloud? Do I want to put it on-prem? So what we're really giving customers is that ultimate sort of flexibility of being able to not only decide where a workload goes today of whatever type that workload is, but in the future, if the situation changes or they change their mind, right, they can move it up to the cloud or move it down to the cloud, because we have this one contiguous compute platform, this one container platform everywhere, wherever they need it. And of course, you're taking that out to the edge. Um, All the way out to the edge, the operational edge. 
So when you think about virtual desktop, I, I just typically think of regulated industries or sort of controlled environments, government, healthcare, claims processing, things of that nature. Is, is, is that still the case? What are the main use cases that you're seeing? That's absolutely one of the use cases, right? But what, what, what we're finding is that when we first invented Azure Virtual Desktop, it was really a matter of responding to once again, like every company, we were responding to customer demand. And one of those requests was, hey, our current VDI situation is both you know, complex and it's expensive. And so we said, well, how about we solve that for you? So what we did was we lifted the control plane of that, so the gateways and everything else that goes into the controlling and allocation of uh, VDI into the cloud to make it simpler for them. So now you can wizard deploy the entire environment in the cloud. Now that gave them access to the workloads and data in the cloud. But, like anything, 72% of stuff is still outside the cloud. So as part of this working with HPE and our uh, hybrid cloud movement, it's being able to, what we did was we took the AVD and then run it on the prem, on prem. So you do have those secure environments, but you also have situations whereby it's, I'm in a, not a secure environment, but I'm in an oil rig in the middle of the North Sea. And so we need to get access to those applications. And so it's really just a ubiquitous platform to put the VDI wherever that data and application is. So you're putting the VDI on Azure Stack, and, and bringing in H, Azure Stack H, HCI with yep. your partner, HPE, right? Hey, yep, HPE, and then we drop it right next to where that workload is. I would love you to be a little more specific. When you, when you talked about the customers and their pain points and they come to you and they say, I want to be more secure or I want to get more efficient with my manufacturing, can you walk us through some of your success stories? You, you don't need to name the names of the companies, but exactly the outcomes that, that you've helped them achieve. Uh, so th th this is, uh, we have millions of outcomes every day. I like to talk about the exciting ones, right? Like we all do. Um, so we've, we've had a, uh, you know, we've had a lot of um, very effective sort of uh, um, uh, situations in manufacturing, right? So for manufacturing for years, they had the operational edge managing the machines and then they had the IT side, which was the traditional IT. And we had a customer very recently, we just closed this global uh, customer in all of their manufacturing, for the first time in their entire history, had security sign off on using Azure Stack in the way we did it to both link the OT and IT network and use the um, software to find network and split those but in physical networks, but they've never signed off on it before, ever. But because we could bring confidential compute to it, we could bring NIST policies on-prem, they looked at it, their security team, which is the hardest people to get past, and said yes for the first time. So it's things like that, it's like we're solving problems that have been there for literally ever, you know, and, and now they're able to manage it all from the cloud. Interesting, so when you think about the IT, the OT, the manufacturing 4.0, industry 4.0, yep. can you give us a glimpse as to when you're talking to customers about their future, and of course AI comes into it I'm sure as well, but yep. What are customers, what, what, paint a picture of what that future looks like for manufacturing. So the, 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 there's a million ways this goes. Most of it's around modernization because if you go into some of these manufacturing facilities, they're walking around with floppy disks updating things from 30 years ago. Come on. I, I know, surprise, <laughs> right? Shocker. Um, and so we're working quite often with the industrial uh, manufacturers, right, in their, um, in their teams to integrate what they're doing in sort of that, you know, sort of factory 4.0 type model, so whereby in Instead of having these physical stuff everywhere, they're now virtualizing it for the first time. But we need to maintain that sort of high availability, because the one thing, and the reason this is going to be on-prem, we'll be on-prem forever, as we all know, the internet goes down, some other kind of problem, I don't want my widget maker stopping, right? And so that's part of it, but they need to modernize, right? Because you know, when you go to update these locations, it sometimes takes a month to get to all these locations, versus I push a button and it just updates it, which is where we're at now with a lot of these. Um, things. That combining with things like, you know, metaverse that you've heard, you know, that kind of industrial stuff where we can apply that, AI is another big one. We had a situation where a customer had, um, you know, millions of, of, of components that they manufacture whizzing by on a uh, conveyor belt. The system that those used the AI was determined if there's a problem, they stop it, rewind the conveyor belt for 30 minutes, scrap all that material. With our modern AI um, system, we're able to narrow that to five minutes. So we're now saving them hundreds of millions of dollars annually in waste um, in producing that stuff. And I would imagine the supply chain's going to benefit from this. I, I always use the example, uh, just recently, uh, we had some furniture delivered. My wife wasn't home, she said, Dave, can you be home to get the furniture? And there was two pieces, and of course only one showed up. 
This just happened again, like two weeks ago. And so my wife Deb was complaining, like, why is that? Why are they split the, and the reason is, because it's this big asynchronous supply chain thing, and it's really complicated. It's yep. a big batch job. So that's going to change, isn't yep. it? Absolutely. So we're seeing now that everything's gone essentially real time. Right, and so whether it's you know manufacturing, retail, inventory, all those kind of things, everything's real time. But now you have to have sort of the systems and the capabilities to actually manage that. You know, the number. How many times have we walked into a store and you go to that section where they say, "Oh, we've got this thing," and it's not there. Yeah. And so we're now seeing AI capabilities in stores to whereby they can, you know, know that someone picked up that object, moved it to another shelf in another area, and put that down, and it'll alert an, an employee that when hey, you're missing this item, the employee can go, oh, it's over, it's over there, and they can go get it for the customer. So the physical and the digital worlds coming together, people talk about digital twins, and, and that's, how far away are we from that, that world? I mean, this is, the, this is inside of five years where we're going to make this transformation. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of it today, I know, yeah. but so, a, it's a bell curve, right? Yeah, well, what, what we've seen, and part of the reason we sort of developed the adaptive cloud and, and from a Microsoft perspective, and we collapsed in our IoT distributed edge hybrid, all of those things under the one banner, is because that was a response to customers. Customers no longer have an OT department. Right? They have an IT department and the operational side rolls up to that. And the reason for that is that every sensor and sort of you know, machine out there today got smart. And how we define that is that it, it was able to take software updates so I could give it more intelligence over time and run other things, as well as it had connectivity. So it's no longer just a dumb sensor sitting out there spinning off stuff. I can now manipulate things and run things at the edge, including things like security. But that's the, that's the change is now just IT even yeah. though it's interfacing into the real world. Security and inferencing now yep. at, at the edge. And you're not persisting all the data, right? You're yep. just persisting the stuff that matters that you want to analyze. Yep. And, yeah. Yeah. So Alan, you're painting a picture that's, that's vivid about what the future holds and it's very optimistic about how it's making data more secure and conveyor belts more productive and, and more efficient. What keeps you up at night in, in terms of all of these different innovations? and? and to be perfectly honest, it's getting um, getting the customers to do it fast enough. From a security perspective, it's it's really a matter of getting them, you know, to where they need to be faster. You know, that's my biggest concern. There's always limitations, with, whether it's budgeting, whether it's personnel, you name it. There's always some kind of limitations. And what you really want to do is ensure that you know we can get those customers on those right paths for whether whether it's automation, whether it's security, whatever that is, as soon as possible, so they can then maximize that value, whether it's through protection or through improved operations. So thinking about where you are today, let's put in the context of your partnership with HPE and AVD, what do you want to be able to say next year at HPE Discover 2025 that you can't say today? Excellent question. I, I want to say that it would be nice if we could get to a point whereby, you know, for example, with our AI stuff, that I've got customers walking up to me and saying, we did this and this is how much money it saved us. We did this, this is how much, you know, it improved our operations. You know, we did this and we're now, you know, from a policing standpoint, we've now caught more criminals. What, whatever it is, is, is seeing the fruition of the stuff. It's, it's like anything that you build, you don't know how it's ultimately going to be used by the customer. And the amazing use cases that they come up with is kind of incredible. We had a situation where a, um, it was a remote area, they had employees go out there, you know, to, in, to, to fix things in these remote areas, and one of them was attacked by uh, you know, a bear. And so what they wanted to do is have drones do real-time wildlife protection or detection following their employees in these remote areas to alert them to um, you know, these kind of situations. And that's a use case that you know, came out of the blue when wow. the situation happened. Fork left. <laughs> Not right. <laughs> what Bear to the right. <laughs> you started this conversation answering a question of Dave's about what is it, what's the vibe at Microsoft now? Yeah. What's it like to be a Microsoft person? And I'm, I'm curious, because you described it as constant excitement. Is that Satya Nadella laying down a culture? Is, is it coming from, is it top down? Or is it, how do you maintain that? Because we know that that kind of energy is so critical to maintaining innovation and, and, and remaining competitive in this ultra competitive environment. Yeah. It's absolutely top down. But it, it's, the, it's the idea of one Microsoft. So internally we have this idea of one Microsoft. We're all working towards the same goal. 
right? And so anytime you get a phone call about I need help or I need this, it's like, yeah, you just do it, right? So it's, and, and it's always in the guise of going after and helping customers, right? So that's, almost everything is about, yeah, customers try and do this, right? What do you think we can do here? So how can we help them with this? It's, it is, it's if, if you're a problem solver, which I like to think I am, it, it, it's, it's that every single day. Someone presents you with a problem, you go, oh, we can fix that. We, we did a similar thing for these other guys. And watching that delight that the customer has gives you energy, right? Because now you get excited because when you get into these group meetings, right, with other internal people and they say, my customer has that problem. I, I can't wait to go and tell them about what we did. You know, and, and that generates that excitement, but it is really top down, right? We've got the engineering group producing amazing stuff. You know, we're out there talking about it to customers about what they want to do with it and how, how we can help them, but it's absolutely top down. Excellent. Alan Kerr, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. A great conversation. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in tech enterprise tech news and analysis.